Day 4, Matthew 1, 1 through 16. Some of the names mentioned in these verses are Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, Uriah's wife, who was Bathsheba, and of course Mary. I have just one more thought about the genealogy before we actually begin talking about the events surrounding the birth of Jesus. What strikes me quite curiously when I read this is that out of about 49 names, give or take, there are only five women's names mentioned. Well, this is quite remarkable for a couple of reasons. One, the culture in those days was unbelievably male-dominated. Women weren't even allowed to worship with the men. They certainly were unable to get an education. Therefore, it's quite significant that these five women's names were historically recorded in the genealogy of Jesus. Four of these women have one main thing in common. They weren't perfect. Tamar was raped. Rahab was a prostitute. Ruth was not even a Hebrew. She was a Moabite, hated by the Israelites. And Bathsheba committed adultery. Mary's name is recorded because she was the blessed woman who gave birth to God's son. This is somehow very comforting to me as I read this passage. It is once again a reminder to me that God uses imperfect people. God can turn anything around for His good and His glory. King David had an affair with Bathsheba, and out of that union came Solomon, who later became one of Israel's greatest kings. And from Solomon came the rest of the genealogy that leads to Jesus. Does this somehow say that God made David and Bathsheba sin so that his will could be accomplished? Absolutely not. God hates sin. But does this somehow say that in spite of sin, if we are contrite as David was and seek to do the right thing from this point forward, can God use us? The answer is most definitely yes. God is still the God of second chances. He is still the God of new beginnings. He is still the God of rebirth, and He is still the God that is setting His people free.